fans have been asking, and finally, Crash has returned in Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy for the PlayStation 4. With the original games dating back two decades ago, Vicarious Visions has started from scratch in building this tribute to the classic series. So today, we're going to look at the remaster and do a complete comparison of all three games with the original PlayStation 1 releases. How did it turn out? Let's jump in and find out. Now first, for those unfamiliar with the project, the Insane Trilogy is a full-on remake of Crash Bandicoot 1 through 3. First released on the original Sony PlayStation in the mid-90s, the Crash series helped kickstart the 3D platforming genre, while elevating its developer to the next level. If you didn't know, Crash was... Created and developed by Naughty Dog! You know, the creator of Way of the Warrior, Heart and need for I tell a tale, know the precious few, and extend the challenge to compete with the greatest warriors the world has ever known. Oh, and those Uncharted games, I guess. Now keep in mind that when development started on Crash back in 1994, the 3D platformer was not really a thing. Nintendo was still hard at work on Yoshi's Island for the Super NES, and at least publicly, Super Mario 64 was not yet a thing. There were no 3D platformers on the market yet on which to base this game, so Andy Gavin and Jason Rubin set out to create, in their minds, the very first 3D platformer. The idea was simple. Rotate the side-scrolling playfield 90 degrees and create a game where the character could run into the playfield instead of along it. They called it, uh, Sonic's Ass because, well, you would be looking at the playable character's backside. So with the help of Universal Interactive's Mark Cerny, Andy and Jason built Naughty Dog and constructed what would become the original Crash Bandicoot. The rest, as they say, is history and Crash would live a long life on Sony's first game console. While Naughty Dog has since moved on to bigger things, many fans still have fond memories of the Crash games and after so many years, Activision contracted Vicarious Visions to bring the marsupial back to life on modern hardware. Rather than attempt to create a sequel, however, the development team went back and recreated the original games with modern visuals and technology. So how successful were they? Well, before we jump into the PS1 versus PS4 comparisons, let's start with the basics, shall we? The video here is presented at 4K, and for good reason, it takes advantage of the PlayStation 4 Pro. Unfortunately, support stops at 1440p rather than a full native 4K image. That said, image quality is still rather clean at least, and if you're rocking an original PlayStation 4, Crash operates at 1080p instead. Both versions target just 30 frames per second, which ties into my biggest complaint with the remake. An older trailer for the game showcased Crash running at 60 frames per second, so the final result here really falls short of expectations. We'll get to the frame rate analysis shortly to see if it can maintain 30 FPS, but for now, Let's drop in the original PlayStation version for comparison. We're starting here with the original Crash Bandicoot, and yes, the improvement is significant. The scale and feel of the original levels is preserved nicely, of course, and remains extremely faithful to the original, but everything else has been recreated with new models, textures, and effects. First off, Crash himself is now rendered at a much higher level of detail than ever before. A nice first shader is used on Crash and other critters throughout the game for that matter, bringing a new level of quality to his rendering. Crash was always an expressive character, but the remake delivers something closer to a pre-rendered cartoon in many ways. The game also benefits from very high quality motion blur. Don't worry, it doesn't smear the camera or remove detail, rather it's a subtle effect which helps give the impression of a pre-rendered film as I suggested earlier. It works extremely well with Crash's animation and greatly improves the fluidity of it. The environments then employ a fresh take on the original texture work. Those original textures are rather low res by today's standards, so the developer was left to interpret this original work at a much higher fidelity. I feel this works pretty well and successfully captures the look and feel of the game world that Naughty Dog first built. Beyond that, in the original, flat textures were used to represent grassy areas and other structures using 2D elements, but in the new iteration, we actually see all of this modeled out in 3D. That means 3D blades of grass placed throughout each level and lots of detailed stonework. Shadow maps also make an appearance this time around. Sunlight filtering through the trees now casts the expected shadows across the world. 
This was obviously impossible back in the PlayStation, but it enhances the environment by allowing the surrounding environment to interact with Crash and the world itself. We of course also see dynamic shadows on the characters. But there's more to this upgrade than just the visuals. For one thing, while Crash 1 remains a pretty fiddly game to play, controls have been tweaked and the game does play more fluidly than before. It's also possible to use the analog stick to move Crash, which of course was not possible on PlayStation 1 since Crash predates the DualShock controller. The archaic save system has also been replaced so your progress is auto-saved after completing each level. Still, you must keep in mind that these original games were among the very first 3D platformers ever released. The fact that the trilogy can stick this closely to the originals while remaining enjoyable is a testament to the groundbreaking work Naughty Dog was engaged in back in the day. Sure, it's no Mario 64 in terms of controller response, but it's also no Bubsy 3D. This was impressive stuff. Crash 2 took things even further then and presented a more refined take on the original game with a structure that offers a lot more variety. Each world now contains a slew of unique visual designs that inject the much needed variety that was missing from the original. Once again, the improvements we saw in Crash 1's remake carry over to the sequel. Weather was introduced here and a more realistic stormy atmosphere is present in the remake of the first level. Water also sees a huge improvement with a very nice shader applied to the surface along with reactive ripples as Crash runs through it. Water in general is rather interesting as it successfully conveys the feeling the original textures were going for, only it's no longer just a flat texture this time. We also see dynamic lights applied to many more objects such as these collectible crystals. Other levels can also sometimes take on a very different feel from the original. This stage, for instance, has a nice golden hue with bloom all over the place in the remade version, but the original is slightly darker with more of a shady jungle feel. Which one do you prefer? And how about these hippos? Lazily resting in the river here, they have a strangely realistic texture and appearance, don't they? That just kind of stuck out to me for some reason. At this point though, it should be clear that these games have seen a massive upgrade in quality. In terms of control though, Crash 2 was already improved over the original game, and that continues here. For those that have played the originals to death, you'll notice a lot of subtle changes to the controls, like the way the sliding and jumping works, and certain surfaces also react slightly differently, such as the ice here. I feel like the remake is an improvement overall, but purists are likely going to notice many more changes throughout. Okay, so as a game, Crash 2 was a huge improvement but it was Crash 3 that really pushed the PlayStation hardware to the next level. By this point, Naughty Dog had refined its skills and was able to deliver unbelievably well animated visuals on the console. The introduction sequence is a fun one and the remake follows along almost exactly. Now, the original scene is of course very well animated for the system with expressive characters along with fully modeled facial features and lip sync. The remake, of course, kicks things up even further to the point where it almost resembles a pre-rendered film. In fact, at first glance, I thought I was looking at a pre-rendered cutscene playing before the game jumped into the real-time visuals, but that's not the case. These are entirely real-time. But the in-game visuals are where we see the most significant improvements. The first stage here presents a medieval playground of sorts, and the remake presents its new vision on this. The flat textured hills in the distance are now replaced with dense, detailed foliage. The tents dotting the horizon are now more fully featured. The water effects are hugely upgraded as we saw in Crash 2, and the lighting is of course rather modern. All of the new visual tricks are put to use here and perfectly capture the feeling of Crash Bandicoot 3. One nice feature over on the original PlayStation though is the use of reflections. The water actually reflects Crash and other enemies, though really, this likely just involves inverting the character model and drawing a simplified mirrored version below the water texture. Still cool anyways. Oh, and the fruit that you've been collecting throughout the adventure is now rendered in full 3D on PlayStation 4 rather than using 2D sprites as we saw in the original. By this point, you should have also picked up on the refinements to the camera system. In many scenes, the PlayStation original angles the camera down somewhat on the character, concealing elements of the background. The remake, though, tends to present a longer, more angled view that shows more of the stage and the surrounding skybox. 
Okay, if we jump over to the next level, then Crash goes below the sea for a stage reminiscent of Donkey Kong Country in some ways. This is where we really see the massive increase in triangle count pay off. These tunnels are now beautifully rounded on the PlayStation 4. The surrounding environments are also, of course, rendered with more detail and improved lighting, though the PS1 game is no slouch and manages to hold its own despite its age. Once you grab onto one of these contraptions here though and start firing missiles, you'll also notice the introduction of dynamic lights here during explosions. Then we come over to stage 3 where huge improvements are once again immediately evident. For one thing, parallax occlusion maps are used excessively in this area, giving the depth within the surface textures here along the wall. Lighting is also much brighter and more attractive with the PS1 version having sort of a dingy doll appearance in comparison. The brighter scenery, use of parallax occlusion maps, the excellent animation, and the reliance on specular highlights all help create a more visually engaging stage. Oh, and if you look along the left side of the wall, you can see where Naughty Dog attempted to simulate the appearance of shadows from the wall along the texture surface. On PlayStation 4, of course, we see actual shadow maps instead. Overall, it's a great looking stage. Alright, so how about a few more stage comparisons then? Stage 4 takes place in some sort of liquid tar, perhaps? Tough to say, but on PlayStation the reflection trick is used here again. On PS4 though, this liquid is used throughout the stage and reacts to the player movement in a way that greatly enhances the presentation. The craggy trees along the side of the level were created using textures in the original game as well, but on PS4 we now have fully modeled trees instead, which is nice. Lighting is improved as well, with the lava projecting a nice orange glow around the scene, while the rest of the surroundings play realistically off both Crash and the Triceratops in pursuit. It's rather interesting, I think, to see just how closely this remake follows the original style. Even with all of these major improvements to the visuals and underlying technology, the style of Crash is maintained perfectly. It still very much looks like Crash Bandicoot 3. Stage 5 sees another major improvement then, this time you ride across the waves in this nifty segment. The water on PlayStation 1 was, of course, rather impressive for its day, but obviously, modern rendering techniques allow for much more realistic water visualization here. The stage is, of course, also a lot brighter, and those little spheres lining the track are fully 3D now as well. So how about the first boss then? Well, this arena features some pretty incredible texture work for the original PlayStation, and I was impressed with how closely the remade texture sticks to this design. In fact, the arena as a whole is very similar to the original, but with all the expected improvements such as a more detailed crowd, rounded building geometry, and of course improved lighting. Okay, how about one more stage then? This last one shows a low-hanging sun which highlights the addition of screen space light shafts to the remake. This is one map where the improved lighting has a real impact on the stage. The use of long shadows and specular highlights really help convey the atmosphere intended by the original game, and it looks great. Of course, we could go on and on and on all day here, but I think by now the takeaway is that we're looking at a very faithful remake that looks dramatically better all around. Despite the new engine and copious amount of new techniques, the feel of the original games are maintained perfectly. On top of all this, the entire soundtrack has been remastered as well. While I'm not the biggest fan of the game's original tunes, they definitely sound a lot better in this new version. On PlayStation 1, the tracks were all sequenced and played back via the system's audio chip. On PlayStation 4 though, most games just rely on pre-recorded digital playback instead, so the music could really sound like anything, but hey, it works. Here's a quick comparison for you. Okay, so if Vicarious Visions has successfully captured Crash on a modern console, are there any weaknesses to discuss? Well, for one thing, as I alluded to earlier, there's the frame rate. The good news here is that the frame rate is very stable, but unfortunately it's just 30 frames per second. The aforementioned 60 frames per second teaser trailer still kinda stings. Now on one hand, the original games were also 30. 
But on the other hand, platform games really just work a lot better at higher frame rates. So while the visuals are top notch, it does feel like an opportunity has been missed here. Higher performance would have meant a more responsive and enjoyable game. Also consider that once Crash hit the PlayStation 2, the series made the jump to 60 frames per second, as did Naughty Dog's own Jack and Daxter. Clearly they would have loved to have gone for 60 with Crash as well, but clearly it was impossible back then. These days though, it really should have been possible. At least the excellent motion blur helps smooth out the image nicely. Oh, and as noted earlier, it is very stable on both the Pro and the standard PlayStation 4, for the most part. On PlayStation 4 Pro, we never ran into a single dip at all. It's a completely stable 30 frames per second. But on PlayStation 4, well, that's mostly true, but in very select cutscenes, we did run into small drops down to 20 frames per second due to the double buffer setup. Now, I also didn't get a chance to play through all three games in their entirety on the base PS4, so based on what I saw in this cutscene, it's possible that you might run into something similar during the actual gameplay as well, but based on our tests thus far, it doesn't seem to be an issue. Still, if you want the most stable performance, you want to play on the PS4 Pro. Now, there is another performance-related issue that really sticks out here that I didn't expect, and that's loading times. The original games load very quickly, especially the third one. There's basically no waiting between stages, you just jump in and the game loads up rapidly. Considering how often you're moving back and forth from the hub to the levels and then back to the hub, it works really well. With the remake, obviously the game engine needs to load a lot more data for each stage. Loading is to be expected here, but that doesn't mean it's not distracting. It takes time to reach the selection map for one thing. Then you have to wait for the stage itself to load after jumping in the bubble. It takes a little bit less time than it does to reach the hub area, but still not great. Once you finish that then, there's more loading. And what if you want to visit the main menu to choose a different crash game? Well, first you get a loading screen, then you get to the logo, but then after the logo, it has to load again before you can even choose your game. and then it has to load once you actually choose your game, and then you have to load the level. You see what I mean? It just felt as if I was seeing load screens on a far too frequent basis. It's understandable, but these games were originally paced to load quickly, so it does kind of hurt the flow. Alright, so overall, we've seen how this game stacks up against the originals, we've taken a look at the performance, and we've addressed the loading. So what else is left? Well, how about a quick comparison between the PS4 and the Pro? As mentioned earlier, the main difference here is an increased resolution on the Pro, but aside from that, the two look very similar indeed. We're basically looking at two subtle differences here. Firstly, ambient occlusion is improved on the PS4 Pro. Secondly, shadow maps are rendered at a higher resolution. Neither of these changes are dramatic, but they do contribute to a more refined image overall on the Pro. Ultimately though, regardless of your console, this is a beautifully crafted remake, let down only by the lower than expected frame rate. If you're looking to revisit Crash, then it's difficult to go wrong with this package. It's clear that the developers have poured a lot of love into recreating these games, but if you're uncertain about whether the package is for you, just go back and check out the original games on PlayStation 1. They play a whole lot like the remake, so it'll give you a good idea if you're still into Crash Bandicoot and want to replay them with improved visuals. If you find yourself in that situation then, give this remake a whirl. That's all for now then, if you enjoyed this video be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off. Oh right, this collection is not the first time the Crash Bandicoot was remade. Naughty Dog did it last year with Crash Bandicoot and Uncharted 4. Couldn't forget that one now, could we?